we're now going to come to the round table itself. So while we're getting the Deputy Prime Minister mic'd up so you can hear him, let's set the scene for it. There are, as we've heard, uh, there have been 820,000 jobs created in Hungary in the last nine years. That's in a country with a population of just under 10 million. The country has boasted the second highest GDP growth in the EU in quarters one and two of this year. And it has one of the lowest employment rates in Europe at 3.4%. So far, so good. But what are the challenges ahead? And can Hungary respond to them? Can it make a successful transition and be among the winners of the fourth industrial revolution? To discuss this, I'd like to invite to the stage Jurika Novak, senior partner at consultancy firm McKenzie and & Company and managing partner in Central Europe, and Deborah Revoltella, director of the economics department at the European Investment Bank. and I can, I can see our countdown clock as well. Uh, and as I said at the beginning, it's my job to keep things running on time and, and we seem to be struggling a little bit with that, so we'll, uh, we'll try and catch something up here uh, if we can. Um, I'd like to start by setting the scene a little bit more. Uh, so, Jurika, we've, we've heard from the, uh, from the Deputy Prime Minister. Perhaps you can give us some, some context. How does... Hungary compare with its, its CE and, and EU pairs? First of all, um, let me thank you for uh, inviting me also here. Uh, my responsibility is for Central Europe, and I know that this is an uh, inspiring Hungary uh, conference, but having heard uh, the esteemed uh, gentleman speak before me, I have to say that uh, entire Central Europe should be inspired by Hungary and its fantastic uh, performance uh, over the last, the last years. Um, that's also part of the context. Uh, I think uh, we are all aware um, that uh, most of the Central European countries have been rapidly catching up uh, with the rest of Europe over the last years. And uh, in GDP per capita, we have some countries which are almost there. Uh, at the European average, such as Slovenia and Slovakia. Uh, Hungary and Poland are uh, right, uh, right behind. Uh, and I think given the trends uh, that we have seen, uh, this, is, uh, this is going to uh, rapidly converge uh, even more. Um, from the perspective of employment, uh, I think uh, we are facing uh, here in particular in Hungary, uh, situation where uh, we are lacking uh, labor, but the technological uh, revolution which is happening all around us uh, is uh, at the same time a challenge and uh, an opportunity. Yeah, as ever. Uh, Deborah, what are, the, what are the EIB's focus areas for, for Hungary? Um, and are they trying to, again, to, to, to set the the uh, Central European context to that. Are, are, there, are there different priorities for Hungary than, say, for its FIFA peers? So, first of all, let me thank you very much also for the invitation and really pleased to be here today and uh, to talk uh, um, about uh, these uh, challenging plans uh, that uh, you are putting forward. And I would like to start uh, saying uh, that this uh, changing shift uh, toward a more technology-driven economy is something particularly important for a country like Hungary, so I very much welcome uh, uh, on this point of view. Uh, because uh, I think uh, the structural issue of an economy like Hungary really requires at this point of development the, um, the upscale in value-added and uh, moving to the technology, new technologies and new digitalization. We have been uh, working uh, in this direction and suggesting this uh, to the economies of the region uh, um, of the Visegrad countries in the last years. So, so as the EIB, I think uh, we 
we really stand uh, behind that. And uh, it's also reflect on what we are doing on an operational point of view in the country. We are, uh, we are lending, uh, trying to support investment activities in the region. So far, uh, there has been much more demand on the pri public sector, so we would like to move more on supporting the private sector. And I think this is uh, something important also on the point of view when you design the new program uh, to have a much more push on the private sector. Um, component. And in terms of uh, investment, we have been working a lot on this uh, concept of smart economies, so smart municipalities, smart, uh, smart development of the countries, and this is uh, something uh, where we continue to, to work. But I think uh, the, the challenge is always, uh, um, uh, as uh, the European Investment Bank, we are not promoters, so, so we are uh, supporting existing projects. Uh, mm -hmm. We can help uh, the projects uh, to develop, uh, but we are supporting existing projects. Uh, there needs uh, to be a demand. So you need uh, to have a market uh, developing in this direction. And uh, we are very happy that uh, the, there is a push for the economy to go in this direction, and we would be happy to support it. Thank you. Uh, Deputy Prime Minister, I couldn't help but notice that you reached for your pen. Do you want to respond to, to either of those? I just shortly, because I had uh, plenty of time to talk about uh, the situation in Hungary and the Hungarian economy, that uh, I believe uh, we have a little bit higher state debt uh, at this moment. So I am Minister of Finance and I have to, I have to minimize the risk uh, of the budget and keep the, uh, keep the balance. Uh, equilibrium. So I believe that uh, we have to focus on uh, uh, the minimize the risk and of course parallel uh, with these uh, financial steps uh, we have to increase the possibilities to invest uh, the foreign investors to uh, the country and of course minimize and reduce the public uh, sector and of course uh, help and support uh, the private uh, sector in the other side. So I absolutely agree with uh, Rebecca that uh, this is the main project uh, of, the, of the government. Uh, talking of, of uh, risks slightly further ahead, what do you think, what are the major successes to, to Hungary's uh, continued success uh, in kind of short uh, to midterm, as far as your crystal ball will allow you to see that? I have mentioned uh, some uh, some external risks because uh, uh, the internal problems we we know that uh, the shortage of the labor market and of course the labor force and uh, of course uh, to exchange uh, the education system mainly focus on the vocational training system but uh, at this moment uh, i see uh, a more risk uh, in the external environment so the as I mentioned, the trade uh, war between the US and the China, uh, the slowing economy of Germany. Uh, so it's a popular saying that uh, if Germany sneezes, uh, the smaller nearby uh, catch a cold. So it's true. And uh, we wait this cold period. So we have to prepare ourselves uh, for this, prepare for this uh, slowing period uh, in the future. And of course, uh, we have to focus to avoid the middle income trap. So the cheap labor force time is over. And uh, we have to find some project and programs which can help, which can support uh, the value added sectors uh, in the country. For instance, uh, pharmaceutical, uh, chemical industry, uh, focus on the uh, environment project, uh, renewable energy and others. So that is the aim of the government and uh, I believe in the next uh, economy protection action plan uh, will be focused on these uh, projects. Thank you. Uh, Deborah, the, are, are these issues unique to Hungary? I mean, uh, the Deputy Prime Minister mentioned about uh, small countries near Germany catching colds. Uh, I seem to remember something similar about the UK and, uh, and the US, but um, are these problems unique to Hungary or is this a, a commonality across the region? I think it's a, it's a commonality across the region, but it's something that, that, that the countries in the region really need to, to tackle. I think that a country like Hungary is so much exposed to the global value change and to the global value chain that is 
concentrated in a few sectors and uh, really the moving into into um, into creating a different part of the economy that is uh, more technology oriented and not only related on uh, cheaper labor which is not uh, cheap anymore i think it's uh, quite important there are uh, in the journey of this upgrade i think there are some challenges that you have to take into consideration i think uh, hungary has been moving very much with a very decisive move of the public sector going forward and I think uh, it's very supportive to the private sector development but also when you go into the new technology adoption of technology you can push the fast adoption but you should not distort the kind of technology the kind of innovation that the private sector wants to develop so the the, the the capacity of, uh, um, of uh, being uh, the driver a stimulus uh, for a more innovation, technology, uh, more innovation economy, um, but uh, doing it in the right way is something uh, quite important uh, and uh, is difficult uh, to manage. I think uh, the example of other countries uh, shows that uh, there are very successful uh, um, cases, uh, but uh, there are some cases in which you can distort the incentive of the private sector and move in the... In the in uh, the wrong direction. So this is quite uh, um, something to watch uh, for the future. Uh, on the other side, I wanted to mention a couple of things. We do every year a survey of European firms, interviewing 2,500 firms in Europe, and we also interview 500 firms in Hungary. We still have to publish the results. But uh, what I was looking at is uh, really, if you look at investment in intangible of Hungarian firms, uh, it's 20% of their investment compared to something like 40% at the European level. So really this part of low investment in R&D, but also the complementary part of R&D, that is training, organ training organizational change, etc., is something where really um, the firms are lagging behind in the country. And the other thing is on uh, digitalization. In, uh, in Hungary, some 50% of firms have digitalized, there is a much stronger digitalization in the manufacturing sector where the service sector is very much lagging behind. So there seems to be something happening with the service sector. Also the service sector has a, a much more negative outlook in terms of future investment dynamics, etc. is the more constrained in terms of a barrier to investment. There seems to be something where the manufacturing sector has been pushing more and the service sector lagging behind. So this may be something that you should consider for uh, the future. Uh, you, you mentioned that, that was, uh, that's new research. When yes. is it due to be published? It's going to be published in November, so I'm really <laughs> giving it a sneak peek. <laughs> you know, okay, well, we, we, should, we, should look, we should look forward to that. Uh, Eureka, um, Hungary is not going to suddenly reinvent itself as a, as a less open economy. I, I doubt it would want to anyway. But um, that with, notwithstanding, how does it best respond to these dangers? So I think uh, that uh, the next step right, would be the, the increase in productivity and competitiveness. Right? I think, uh, as we all heard, uh, we have reached a pretty high level of employment already. Uh, and uh, even though there are some very positive trends with the people starting to return to Hungary rather than uh, exit the country, um, it is unlikely that uh, the next investments will drive additional employment, right? Also because of the tightness of the labor market uh, in the region. So one of the things mentioned uh, that uh, Hungary is lagging behind is the investment in R&D. Hungary is actually two and a half times behind uh, Austria, for example, uh, in uh, R&D as part of the, uh, of the GDP. And uh, in our view, this will be the key driver in increasing the productivity and competitiveness for, uh, for the future. However, Hungary has some excellent foundations. For example, the educational system uh, is very, very good. Uh, however, the, uh, the prevalence of the digital skills adoption of uh, technology in uh, the way that the country works is not the same in public and private sector okay. as, we, as we just heard. And uh, this is a challenge uh, that should be tackled so that the next uh, engine of growth, so to say, kicks in. Uh, I believe that uh, uh, 
the educational system is producing the right kind of labor skills. Now the question will be how to transition those people into the companies which mm -hmm. are currently active and how on that basis to perhaps attract other companies to come and invest in, more, in less labor intensive but more knowledge-based economy. Education is an interesting one because uh, I spend a lot of time with, with, with various chambers and, and almost all of the chambers have a concern about... Um, Hungary has always had a great reputation for its education. It turns out very, very clever people. Um, but there's always this sort of disconnect between when you get your fresh graduates, your fresh graduates coming into the workplace and there's a, a shortfall, shall we say, in their, in their soft skills. So there's clearly work that needs to be done. It's very good at turning out very clever people, but they're not always immediately able to work in the workplace as, as well as uh, the, the businesses would like. So I guess that that's... That, that, that's one area to be looked at, but, but Deputy Prime Minister, uh, we talked a lot about this, and, and, and I guess we're going to talk about it throughout the rest of this conference. Um, the, this move from, we've done very well at, at attracting manufacturing jobs, now it's the move to something else. We're, we're heading towards Industry 4.0, as I'm, uh, I'm always being told. We need to find, well, we, there, there, there are, things that are going on at the same time. Um, we have digitization, we have automization, we have robotization, uh, which is both a threat uh, and a possibility. Um, if we're already at a, a place where the level of, of uh, employment is unlikely to go much higher, then perhaps it's more opportunity than, than threat, but it, it should be fairly obvious to everyone in this room why you've, you've moved, you've made this paradigm shift from made in Hungary to, uh, to invented in Hungary, designed in Hungary. Could you perhaps talk a little bit more about, about that and what your ministry is doing to try and encourage that? Just a short comment uh, regarding to the uh, proposals, uh, the R&D sector and others, so, and the labor uh, market. So, now the employment rate is uh, 70% and uh, it's a good uh, sign uh, about the uh, recent ac economic uh, achievements. And we see some reserves uh, in this labor field. So among the women is the, the lower uh, the uh, employment than among the men. So we believe that uh, it can uh, help and support uh, the women's activity in the labor market. Of course, there are 3.4% uh, uh, unemployment rate, so we try to generate uh, these people to back to the primary labor market. And of course, uh, the pensioners, uh, it's a new program and a new uh, legislative uh, decision of the government that uh, we uh, give more uh, tax uh, allowances for the pensioners who step back uh, to the labor market. So I see some reserves in the labor. But of course, uh, we have to focus on the, about the new technologies and the new uh, system, the R&D sector and others. And uh, we have some good uh, experiences when we, uh, with the big and the multinational companies, uh, make a cooperation. For instance, uh, in Jör, where the car manufacturer, uh, the AOD, uh, work together in close cooperation with the local uh, university. The similar effect uh, in Ketchkamate, where the Mercedes uh, work together with the, also the local university. And of course, the Siemens has the, uh, also a similar program in Budapest uh, with some universities. So, that, so I think so it's one uh, major step, of course, to uh, work together in the R&D field uh, uh, and this sector. And of course, we have to change uh, our education system. So the vocational training system, we work together with the Chamber of Commerce uh, in Hungary, where we uh, try to follow the demand of the economy. That is the, the future. So we have to react all changes uh, in this market. And of course, uh, among the university, we have a new initiative where uh, the uh, local uh, uh, university, the Corvinus University, uh, have a different uh, basis in the future where they can uh, uh, step uh, the competition with other uh, European uh, universities. 
supported by the government and give uh, a big uh, share from the mall and, uh, and uh, Richter's to finance uh, this activity. So both sides, the labor market and the education system, we have to change and of course focus of the digitalization, the robotization. So we have to change our national programs, not just focus on the labor side, focus on the technological side and the new uh, technologies in the future. Uh, Jurika, talking about that, do, do you see evidence of that happening? Is it happening fast enough? Is it, uh, is it, what more needs to be done with this system to try and get us to the stage where we have the people who are capable of doing value-added jobs? So I think uh, on the evidence, the fact that uh, Hungary is at the forefront of uh, intelligent mobility uh, in, uh, in the automotive uh, is already an evidence that the country, or at least there are pockets in the country that are aware of the trends. Uh, and I am confident that this will spread uh, throughout mm. all the sectors. This is something that can only be encouraged uh, and should be encouraged so that uh, the economy of the country moves up in the, in the value chain, as you rightly pointed, from made in Hungary to designed in Hungary. Um, one, if I may, uh, objective or ambition, because what our agenda is to raise ambitions of Europe uh, as an institution and to raise ambitions of Central Europe. Hungary by now is a very important partner for the Western European uh, countries, as we heard. Many Western European countries, uh, companies have significant operations in Hungary, and rightly so. Maybe the ambition should be to attract the headquarters into the Hungary. And if, that, if you found a way as the government to achieve that, the, the, the domino effect onto the entire economy would be huge. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's, it, as a, as a, a business journalist who works in Hungary, I, I, would, I look forward to that day. Um, Deborah, final, final thought from you, I think. Um, from an economist's point of view, what else could Hungary be doing to enable its path through the transition to, uh, to Industry 4.0? What tools does it have? What tools does it need? I think... Uh, Two things I would like, three things actually, I would like to mention. On the one side, on the on the journey to more digitalization, and that I talk about the digitalization in a wider perspective. So thinking about the full range of robotization, Internet of Things, etc., yeah. the old kind of technology. But that I think the on the one side you have the the, the top firms, the most productive, the bigger biggest firms, etc., that know what they do. But then you also have the small firms, and the small firms, you can have the startup, they normally, they born digital, they know how to digitalize, and they go in the direction. The challenge is for the older, small, medium enterprises, and there the transition is difficult, because it's not only an issue of finance or incentive, etc. It's really knowing what to do. And in that space, I think there is a... Um, there is a need uh, some, for some policy intervention. Uh, try to help uh, the, small, the old, small and medium enterprises, uh, the manager of uh, the small, old, small, medium enterprises, understanding how to do, how to face uh, the transformation of the company and go on. Uh, so there is uh, something where maybe policy can uh, try to front load uh, the transformation of the firms. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is uh, one area that I think is important. The second thing is uh, definitely training. I think uh, that is uh, training and retraining is the most important thing that you have to do. Because uh, still a lot of jobs uh, will be lost in some sector and you need uh, to avoid uh, the lost uh, generation and retrain the people. But uh, knowing how to train is difficult because uh, normally training and vocational training tend to be a little bit more backward looking and they it's difficult to skip to the new technologies, to the new, new, new topics, uh, and uh, to really start uh, retraining uh, for the new um, immediately. The last point uh, that, uh, that I wanted uh, to mention is something that uh, at the European level is coming uh, uh, as a top uh, policy priority, and is uh, energy transition. And I think uh, I just wanted to mention uh, that everything uh, that has to do with uh, technological change uh, can also new um, R&D, et cetera, can create a new opportunity, making uh, 
easier something that is incredibly difficult, that is the energy transition. And for a country like Hungary, I think you have to start thinking how to use everything that you are doing in terms of um, technological transformation, innovation, etc., also to start kick-starting kick the energy transition for the country. Thank you very much. We are almost out of time. Um, <laughs> Okay. We'll, 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 I'll grab one, one quick final thought from each of you. Just before that, um, there is one other problem with the older SMEs that's particular to Hungary, but I guess it would be true for, for many of the former Eastern Bloc countries, which is you have this, this wave of entrepreneurs when the change comes who set up their businesses, and we're now getting to the stage where we're either there or very soon will be there where it's the generational change. Do they hand over to, to their children? Are their children even interested in keeping it on? Do they bring in outside help? And, and, that's, a, and that's a very real issue, I think, with the, with the SMEs in particular. Um, Deputy Prime Minister, a final, a final thought. Thank you for your proposals and advices. So it's uh, training and training and training again. Uh, if we have to focus uh, on the small and medium-sized entrepreneurs, uh, that is a good way to increase the competitiveness of the economy. So, thank you. Deborah, the final thought? I'm <laughs> not thinking. Eureka. No, I think we are, we are fully aligned. I think I the agree. direction of the country is very clear. Uh, it is uh, the right one to increase the, the performance for the well-being of its citizens. And uh, now it's all about the execution. Excellent. Execution. It's an important word. Thank you all. <laughs>